it's fair to say we've got something a little bit tasty today. The car, Aston Martin Vulcan, it's one of one in the world because it's the only street legal Aston Martin Vulcan. We're with my old mate, Michael Malik, RML Group. Can't wait to get this bad boy on the road. Let's go. Adam, principal uh, design engineer for RML Group. Is this more like a racing car or a road car for you? Because for me, it just looks, still looks like a racing car, but. Yeah, well, we've kept the essence of the Vulcan, I think, haven't we? Um, and that's one thing I'm really pleased with. It, it is a, it's definitely a racing car for the road because it's very minimalist, very, very raw, almost. Well, for me, you've kept everything to do with the Vulcan and, and aesthetically, we can see some changes straight away. We can see some changes with uh, these lights. These rear lights are just fantastic. Yep. You still managed to keep the, uh, the blades, the LED blades, but you've had to put a cover on for the IVA. For the radius requirements, obviously we wanted to keep the lights. They're a feature of the Vulcan. And so we've put the cover on for it to achieve that. They still look amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad we got the lights on now. You can see some really subtle differences. There's quite a big difference at the front. They look so Aston Martin. You've done an incredible job here. So for anyone that knows, the standard Vulcan doesn't have any headlights in because it's a race car. So it's a car for uh, the track only. But these, you and whoever did the first cut in here is a braver brave man than man, me. Brave man, very brave man. And obviously we've mimicked the styling of the lower light in the upper light as well. We've got a, an IVA requirement that is a dip beam and a main beam and a certain height and everything else and uh, an E-marked light. But you know, it works well, it works really well. Uh, and you still got this huge um, split at the yeah, front? Yeah, so we, we've, we've had to make a few changes on the splitter. One is, uh, again, the radius requirement. Uh, the standard splitter has a, a fence on the side for aerodynamic oh, okay. benefit. It's slightly longer. We've shortened it to give you a better approach angle. But it still uh, looks great, doesn't Yeah, it? and it's, it's, again, kept the essence of the Vulcan. So how did you do that? You've put, literally, you've got a brand new carbon fibre splitter? Yeah, yeah, we remoulded the car. Brand new hood, or did you...? It's a modification of existing. A clamshell? Yeah. yeah. Clamshell or hood, what do you call it? I in, call it in, a clamshell. In the engineering world, and it's a huge clamshell. Yeah. In fact, let's open this clamshell up, because it's very, very special to see as well. The seven litre... Should go, now we're out. V12. Naturally aspirated engine. Yep. You must have tinkered with, uh, with various settings. and So we've had to remap for emissions and there's a fast idle requirement for the emissions. That has involved a remap um, and obviously cats and different exhaust for silencers. We've put a, a different cooling pack on to give it better temperature control. Standing you traffic you just, discrete you, adjustments, you know. You don't think of these things. You don't think you, this car isn't designed to be standing in traffic in on no. Sloan Street. This no, car is designed it's to be a race car. Exactly. And another thing that I'm interested in, pulling away in first gear, because one of the things I remember about the first thing I saw with the Vulcan was Clarkson yeah. driving it and he's sort of pulling away in a very aggressive typical race car. And what's this like now? What I mean to drive So we, we've changed the gear ratios to make it easier. We've changed the clutch pack to make it easier and all that's really good. It's, it's really nice and progressive. We'll you find out drive. soon, I hope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, they're not IVA requirements. Obviously, they're extras to try to make it a bit more of a road car than a race car. We've changed the spring rates and damping rates to get, make it a bit more compliant as a road car. We've got ride height lifting on the car. We've given it more steering lock to make it a more usable road car. That's had the knock-on effect on the suspension, the wheel width, the brake duct. Um, but surely you don't need to worry about the steering because if the steering lock isn't going to get you all the way around, you just turn the traction control off and you just split the throttle. Yeah, maybe. Easy. <laughs> I could have saved you a fortune. Yeah, yeah. Should we put this down again yeah. and make our way towards the back? Ah, another thing I've noticed, these wing mirrors. Believe so this, this is a, a DB11 mirror ah, okay. um, for two reasons. One is an E-mark mirror glass, which okay, is required which for is, IVA, yep. and an indicator repeater that we needed for IVA. So rather ah. than put an indicator repeater on the side of the fender or anything like that, we took a DB11 mirror made our own mirror stock and integrated it to the, the Vulcan door. Wow. All of the windows have to be replaced with E-marked windows for IVA, uh, windscreen wiper and washer. Of course. Wow, I didn't even notice that. Look at this, I didn't even notice it. That's a testament to you guys because I didn't even notice that that was there. But We said it would be interesting to park two, a standard one and this one yeah. side by side to see what the differences are. But Next time we'll do that. Yeah, and yeah. come round the back because the back, I think, is... I don't know, there's lots of sexy views and profiles of this car, but the back, I have to say, is pretty special. Yeah, it's pretty car through and through, isn't it? Um, it's, again, a we, we, it's a beautiful we've, car. We've kept the essence, hopefully. We've got a, 
a number plate aperture that we needed to put on with number plate lights <laughs> and a fog light and a reverse light. But I love the fact that it's tucked away here. Yeah. So 50-50 light, reverse light, fog light, tucked away, you wouldn't even see it. And you've got the original rain light here for racing. Yep. Why do you use that for the fog light? Uh, because it's not E-marked. It, again, uh, it, it has okay. to be an E-marked light to wow. satisfy IBM. So much compliance. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, so I've learned a lot already today. We're going to move forward and we've got a monkey seat. We've got a rear wing or a spoiler. It could be the class of spoiler. And we've got a gurney yep. or a wicker bill. Yep. How about that? All, all of which needed finishing strips to uh, make them IBA compliant. It's a minimum radius, two and a half millimeters. So who's going to be Googling monkey seat, gurney, wicker bill right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully stay and watch this video first, but then after that. But if you don't know, this is a monkey seat. So introduced by F1? It's an F1 terminology. I think the, the names come from F1. You'd be a brave monkey to sit on that driving this fast, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. I have to say, I wasn't quite sure about the indicators until I saw them in real life, yeah. because I thought they were almost like a, a bolt-on, which of course they have to be to a certain extent, a modification, but they look absolutely fantastic. They look like a factory finish as everything yeah, does. Yeah, it's the only departure from Vulcan, I think. Visibility from this kind of angle, if you're in a truck cab, you have to be able to see the opposing indicator. And the indicator on this car was okay. this bank of lights here, which is obviously obscured by sure. this. So by putting them there, there's absolutely no doubt about it. This is very interesting. No rear window. No rear window means we have no requirement for a rear view mirror, both of which have to be E-marked for IVA. So that's a little bit of a circumnavigation of the regulation. Um, you're actually near another one there. I don't know whether you saw that on the list. The fuel cap. The, the fuel cap has to be locking and tethered so that you can't leave it behind when you fill up with gas. Wow, I never knew that. That's, a, that's an IVA regulation. That's an IVA requirement. But what you don't realize, or what I don't realize, is it's not just the aesthetics, it's underneath as well. Everything, the list goes on, the overhangs, the ride heights, the heat shields, the list is pretty much endless, but you've made it so it can be usable, not just to get it through compliance, not just so you can drive it on the road legally, you've yep. made it so you can drive it on the road and enjoy driving it on Easily the road as well. make it a more, more pleasurable exercise. The big, big difference, I think, not just, uh, not just ticking the boxes for compliance, but actually make it enjoyable for, yep. for the lucky yep. owner yep. as well. Uh, obviously, the standard seat has head support ears on it, and we've changed uh, the seat it has. because we needed to for 90 degree plus or minus 90 degree visibility. The most obvious change inside is the radius requirement and all the switch gear. So all the steering wheel switch gear um, was modelled with a smaller radius than required for IVA. So we've put finishes on all of these and covers on all of the internal switches. In layman terms, what this means basically is they're a bit smoother. There's yeah, no exactly. sharp edge. Exactly. So you, if, you, if you do get in a crash or something happens, you're not going to cut yourself, hit your head. Exactly. And the that. same, I think, with this on the steering wheel. The, so the pad in the center. Exactly. Yeah. As opposed to the original Vulcans have got the Aston Martin yeah, which logo. Yeah, make a bit of a dent. <laughs> we need an immobilizer. So we have an immobilizer key that goes with it. Um, central locking. Oh, we put wow. door locks in here to give a central locking and things like that. You know what? My mind is blown away with the stuff that we've been discussing off camera, yeah. the, the detail, uh, what has gone into this car to transform it into a road car. It's not just a case of changing a few things, putting some headlights and indicators on. It's a complete transformation. Completely, completely different car, but still a Vulcan. Mm. You know, that's, that's, I, and I've, I, I think we can all be quite proud of that, really. It's been such a massive project on this car because it was never intended as a road car. Yeah, and it's clear from you guys after stripping it apart that yep. that was never the case. Absolutely. And I think another really, really uh, uh, amazing point is that it's had the full endorsement and support of Aston Martin as yep. well, which to me is a real testament to yep. you guys yep. and what you do. But, uh, and they should be very proud because they produce one of the most beautiful cars ever. And now you've just made it much more usable and the fact that you can use it on the road. Yep. It's incredible. So after my engineering lesson from Adam, oh my goodness, does that guy know his stuff? It was finally time to get the car fired up and venture to where no Vulcan had ever gone before. just so surreal seeing this racing car on steroids sharing the road with everyday normal traffic. I just can't imagine what the people traveling to work or going shopping 
Must have thought suddenly seeing this alien looking car flying past them with the most phenomenal V12 sound. We all know the Vulcan was designed to be as brutal and as exhilarating as possible, but to see it mixed in with the cyclists and the little hatchbacks was just so bizarre. And sadly, the British roads didn't really help us because we had the wettest, most greasy roads ever, but you could still feel it was so raw and thrilling to drive, even though we could get a fraction of the power down. And the noises and the vibrations still from the cabin really encompassed you, and it just felt like there's nothing else like it on the road, which I suppose there is nothing else like it on the road because it is the only road legal Aston Martin Vulcan in the world. And if anyone's worried about the Vulcan being converted from the original design, RML will convert the cars back to full factory spec whenever the owner desires so they can be used as they were originally designed for on track days or to go down to your local supermarket and pick up your shopping. And finally it goes without saying such a huge thanks to RML, everybody in the RML group. These guys are the unsung heroes. What they do and what, it, what they get up to is just phenomenal and of course the owner who wants to remain private but wow congratulations on your phenomenal road-going Aston Martin Vulcan.